Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a very filler video, because I've not been making much progress on the real content. Um, so, uh, this right here is a pretty special card that I got as a uh, bit of fan mail from somebody, so big thank you to them for sending the card over. Um, and this is an R9 Fury from Gigabyte, and that's kind of why it's a bit of a special card, because it's one of the three... Uh, custom R9 Fury PCBs that I'm aware of. Um, there's the Asus Strix. Admittedly, the Strix has two different PCB variants, but I... Like, the, the, they, they both fall under the Strix model, so I don't... Well, they are separate, so I guess you could say four straight, uh, four different R9 Fury PCBs that you can get um, that aren't the reference PCB. So, yeah, there's the, the Strix version 1, Strix version 2, there's the Nitro, and then there's this. And as far as I know, this that's it for custom R9 Fury PCBs. There's no other custom PCBs for R9, R9 Furies. And this is the least common of the custom R9 Fury PCBs, as far as I'm aware, just because uh, I think Gigabyte came out with these cards, like, really late. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what's under there. This is Gigabyte, after all, so it could be really good or really bad or just kind of normal, right? Like... <laughs> Um, I don't have any, like, with Asus, I generally expect their custom PCBs to be better than the reference design. With Sapphire, um, it depends. Um, but generally, like, I've not seen Sapphire PCBs that were really horrible. And then there's Gigabyte, where they're really all over the place. So, yeah, once again, big thank you to the person who sent this card in. Because this is a PCB, like, I'm not aware of any actual pictures of this being on the internet. So I'm pretty excited to, to find out what is un actually under, you know, the heatsink and, of course, the backplate. This simply looks pretty simple. Yeah, eh, this is going to be a pretty easy disassembly. Um, so let's get into it. I'm going to need something to keep track of the screws. So, R9 Furies are not cards I would recommend disassembling, generally. Um, mostly because they have the most fragile interposer of all the HBM cards that exist. Um, because the interposer on these has a bunch of the actual uh, circuitry exposed. And so if you uh, basically touch that part of the interposer a little bit too roughly, uh, the card dies. Um, and that's how I killed one of my Fury X's. Um, yeah, you, you basically look at the interposer wrong on these and, and it kills the card. So the solution to that is you just don't try to clean off all of the thermal paste. You just leave it on there. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, try, trying to clean the clean the, the old thermal paste on these cards is kind of like, yeah, that's fastest one of the fastest ways to kill them potentially. So let's see. Oh, comes apart nicely. And yeah, you can really see the interposer on this one. Um, it actually looks like a relatively fresh application of thermal paste, and in terms of power delivery... Oh, interesting, this has doublers. I was like, wait, that's an 8-phase? What? How is that possible? The controller doesn't do 8-phases. Well, doublers. Um, come on, let go. Man, I hate fan connectors. Like, they're not designed to be unplugged, that's kind of why they're so hard to unplug, but... Uh, okay, let's get in there. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. They have it. Oh, man. So, I was really ho- Well, I'll just show you. So, this is awful, what they did there. The notch, right? The notched part of the connector is against that capacitor over there. So, it's, like, completely impossible to get at. Oh, gigabyte. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gigabyte. <laughs> okay, well, luckily the tweezers can deal with even that. There we go. So that wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, so we've got an 8-phase VRM. The controller is, of course, the IR3567B, because that's the default controller for R9 Furies. I'm guessing these are uh, um, IR3598s. Of course they are. Yep, 
IR3598s. So the reason why these are IR3598s is because um, these are dual drivers as well as doublers. So one PWM signal goes into one of these chips, and then that chip actually puts out uh, four MOSFET driving signals. So that are out of phase, uh, with with like out of one like two for each phase, right? Because you need a drive for your high side MOSFET and you need drive signal for your low side MOSFET. It's not really a signal. It's like an act. Well. And then, no, it's kind of a signal, right? but it's it, like the reason you have a drive signal is like it has to be actually strong enough to switch the MOSFETs on and off because power MOSFETs do require quite a bit of energy uh, to turn on and off. Now, let's get the back plate off because um, obviously on this side we have no filtering of, on the PCB, which isn't, it's not really that weird. That's actually pretty normal for Furies with the, well... Like, this is very reference. The, the ref, well, the thing is, the reference card has the VRM rammed right up against the core, and it's a six phase. Also, we should check those MOSFETs. Hopefully, hopefully these are good. <laughs> this is Gigabyte. <laughs> so, <laughs> lower, lower your expectations. I also want to get the backplate off. Um, yeah, this should all be V-Core. Actually, I'm going to get the multimeter to, to check. This should all be V- eh, No, it's not even should. It has to be. Um, then this is probably HBM power, because um, that normally lives in this sort of area of the PCB. And then over... Man, this is a whack VRM layout. Where's the VCC? Because there's a memory controller rail. It could be that, but I can't see the MOSFETs for it, so I'm really confused. Um, so let's move this out of the way. Um... So there's the back of the card. I actually like what they did with the filtering. Oh man, you can really sti see the, the stitching on that power plane. It looks like it's got a skin condition. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, we've obviously got SP caps for the filtering. Um, and these are D, so A, B, C. So these are two volt um, SP caps, which is fine. You wouldn't really need higher voltage rated SP caps. They're 470 microfarads each. Um, yeah, we have some right right along the VRM and then some before the core, and then of course the uh, absolute uh, flood of multilayer ceramics heading towards the GPU core. So this might actually do a really good job of, in terms of transient response compared to the some of the other cards. Though, admittedly, a lot of the other cards use, well, I don't think that'll actually work out, because the reference card also uses uh, discrete MOSFETs. Um, so I think... Like, technically, discrete MOSFETs with doublers would have, like, the slowest response in the controller to uh, MOSFET um, part of the, the VRM. But uh, with enough filtering, I don't think that would necessarily make, like, matter. Like, if the capacitors can slow down the rate at which the voltage is dropping during a load insertion, that wouldn't really... Yeah, like, you wouldn't have that downside. So this might actually be one of the, the best... PCBs in terms of transient response. Um, and now let's check what MOSFETs these are. So I'm not gonna... Well, they're not 4C10Ns, so that's a good sign. Oh man, these are really hard to read. Okay, so we have 6508 Alpha and Omega Semiconductor and 6414s. I've never seen these before, so I actually don't know what they are. You know what? Let's look them up on Google. Um... I don't really have much of a plan for this video, so can't go like we can't be going off the rails if there wasn't a plan. So give me a second, because <laughs> unplanned Google searches. So alpha and there we go. And so 6508, obsolete, of course. So that's our low side MOSFET. And the reason we're going to look at the low side first, eh, 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 those aren't great. <laughs> there is two of them. So for comparison on a reference Fury, you would have a IRF uh, 6894. Um, and, but you'd have one of these. And this is, yeah, but that's 0 0.9 milliohms. Um, actually, I think, wait, I'm not sure if Infineon has the max, because this is a this is a really frustrating thing with some, some of the MOSFET manufacturers, is some of them specify, yeah, so Alpha is specifying maximum RDS on, 
Um, whereas Infineon, I think, is specifying typical, yes. So this is actually 1.3 milliohms. Um, whereas this is three, that's still, like, still better. Like, that's basically, that's less than half the RDS on, on the low side MOSFET. Now, admittedly, we do have two low side MOSFETs in parallel, so effectively each of the phases here is, like, 1.6 milliohm RDS on, um, not 3.2 because the two MOSFETs are in parallel. And we also have an eight phase instead of a six phase. So this is probably roughly on par in terms of VRM efficiency with the reference design, but the heat is technically spread across more components. So thermally, it might actually work out to be slightly better. Um, even though on pay, like efficiency wise, I don't think it's significantly different. It just like, the thing is the, the R9 Fury, like the reference design for this VRM takes up like, Oh, takes up like this much space of the PCB, right? Like it fits into the, the space that Gigabyte is using for six of their phases. Um, and it's also a lot shorter because you don't have two low side MOSFETs in, you know, uh, after each other like that. So yeah, thermally, this probably does just fine. Um, transient response wise, I think this might actually have an edge over some of the other cards. Um, so that's something I need to test. And, um... Uh, yeah, nice card, like, surprisingly nice card. Now, I want to figure out the other minor rails. So, I need to find the multimeter. Oh, it's nearby. Oh. So, if I'm not mistaken, the reason this card was sent to me is it's actually been acting a bit dodgy, which I wonder if that has something to do with the fresh-looking thermal paste application. Because, uh, yeah, it is, like, cleaning the thermal paste on Furies, if you go a little bit too hard on the interposer, dead card. Um, so, anyway, we're gonna go ground for one of these, and then we're just gonna check that, well, these are all V-Core, obviously, right? Oh, man, this is... Cards, like, the, the thing is, if you have a card, yeah, so that's that's V-Core, so 3.5. It's a really high resistance, actually. So let me, I'm going to go against a screw hole. Be less fancy. Well, now nah, the PCIe slot bracket is just more convenient. Okay, yeah, I wasn't making proper contact with the shield on that DVI port. The, the reason why it's so flaky is because there's, like, a... If you have a card that's just kind of been run forever, um, they tend to have... Well, some cards have a lot of flux residue over everything, which you have to dig through before you get contact, and some of them just have, like, corrosion. Yeah, so that's actually a reasonable resistance for that. Um, yeah, so that's V-Core. More V-Core. More V-Core. More V-Core. Okay, it seems like I found a spot on the inductors that's actually easy to measure against. And... Come on. Yeah, V-Core and one more. V-Core, yeah. And so this should be HBM. Yep, really high resistance. And this, VDDCI? What's this then? Okay, actually that might be the memory control. Yeah, that's 20 ohms. Why do they have the inductors laid out like that? Wait, are these in parallel? Wacky gigabyte card. Uh, yes. Yes, they are. So these... That is such a weird layout. That is, like, yeah. Uh, it's two separate phases, though. You can actually see the, the power plane. Wait a minute. Oh, we have a 3598 right here. I'm trying to... Yeah, so VDDCI on these cards is controlled by the V-Core controller, so it makes sense. Actually, no, that's a 5230. What the hell? 
is going on? It's a 5230 over, so we have a 5230 over here. I thought this was a 3598, but that's another 5230. We have another 5230 over here. So those are NCP, uh, those are on semiconductor chips. Oh wait, no, the 3598's up here. Oh man, this layout is whack. And what the hell are all the 5230's for? Like, this is a power plane. Like, this this right here is some... Oh, that might be the one point... Wait, what? But... Oh, I guess this might be a dual NFAT then. This chip over here might be a dual NFAT. Because that connects to the inductor. It could also be a fully integrated little buck converter in and of itself. But then why the hell is there so many 5230s everywhere? Like, this one makes sense, because that's right behind the memory VRM, or right next to the memory VRM, so that one makes perfect sense. I have a 5398 over here, so we have two-phase VDDCI. Um, you have a little... Okay, yeah, this inductor is connected to this chip. You can just about see that through the solder mask. Um, so that would... Then there's no 5230 immediately in the area, right? There's nothing really there, but over here we have a 5230. This is a BIOS chip, that's a BIOS chip, that's why they have the colorful dot on them. The card does have a dual, dual BIOS switch. Um, so yeah, the input filter is not really that impressive, but you know, I wouldn't expect that much. Well, I think this is a downgrade to what you normally get on the reference card, because at the same time I don't think it would necessarily make too much of a difference. Might be worth messing around with upgrading the input filtering though, maybe. Um, we'll see. Um, Yeah, so overall, an interesting design from Gigabyte. Interesting. Um, like, two-phase VDDCI is, is, like, that's really overkill. Like, the VDDCI rail on, on HBM cards pulls very little power. On GDDR cards, the memory controller pulls quite a bit of power. It pulls, like, say, on a, on a 7970. The memory controller rail pulls about 15 amps at one volt. Uh, on HBM cards, it should be a lot less than that. Um, so I'm really surprised that we have two-phase VDDCI, because on most other Furies, the VDDCI rail is like a single phase, basically an afterthought, like, tiny little thing. And then here we have a two... Like, this is actually a really substantial VDDCI rail, so that's interesting. Um, the layout is so whack, though. Because, like, what they're doing is... The power, like, the the output of the VRM <laughs> is towards the display port over here. Is that a display port? Yeah, that's a display port. So they're literally put it, like, the power is outputting over here, and then there has to be a connection from, oh, like, this side of these inductors all the way back to the chip, which is really weird. So that, that like, I thought these were input filtering, but nah, they're not input filtering because they're 15, uh, 150 nanohenries. Um, this is, these are, well, this is an input filter. Oh, we've even got fuses. Do we have fuses everywhere or just one fuse? Ah, uh, just the one. Okay, so we have a basic, um, just, like, just to prevent, like, so if you have the anything connected, which I think would only be these rails, all of this should be connected directly to the eight pins. Um, we can actually, should we check that? I don't, eh, yeah, well, let's check that. Let's check that. There's no plan to the video. It's filler. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? Like, no, no, like most people don't care about R9 Furies in this day and age anyway. AMD drop driver support. So actually, no, I'm doing this wrong. So I think this inductor connects to this MOSFET. And I am, of course, correct about that. And then it connects to this MOSFET. Yeah. And this MOSFET. Yes, it does. This MOSFET. Yes, it does. And then it doesn't connect to this one. Yeah, it doesn't connect to that one. We get kilo ohms on the multimeter. But it does connect to this inductor. And then that connects to this inductor. Well, that also connects to this MOSFET, and this MOSFET, and this MOSFET. 
Yes, okay. So the entire vCore VRM is connected to the two 8 pins, and there's no fuses on that. So if the vCore VRM failed on this, then uh, you're gonna have a bad day. <laughs> you're gonna have a very bad day. There's no fuses on the vCore rail. Uh, they do have a fuse for the minor rails. I'm not sure how you, like... Well, I guess if one of the minor rails fails, then at least you've got a fuse for that. So that's kind of neat. Um, contact of the thermal paste on the HBM looks not great. Also, the heatsink is a direct touch implementation. Oh man, they've got like, the, the heat pipes aren't flush. Oh, you can't see that on camera. But yeah, the heat pipes actually rise up a little bit. Or can you? Ah, no, you can see it. Yeah, you can see the little... Like, they flatten the heat pipes in this area. Here they raise up a bit. So that's interesting. Because as far as I know, this frame on a Fury is not taller than the chip. Like, that's level with... Uh, that's lower than the chip is. So I don't know why you'd have to do that. Like, there are other AMD cards where you do need to do this because the chip is lower than the outer frame. Mainly 7.9... Uh, 7970s uh, do that, and so some 7950s as well. Um, oh, I know why the, the HBM contact is bad. <laughs> that heat pipe literally doesn't cover it properly. It's a good thing the HBM doesn't produce, like, pull a bunch of power, because, yeah, this, this, that's, like, it's literally not making contact, because that, the, like, that bottom edge of those HBM chips is over the edge of that heat pipe. So, I'm not a fan of this heatsink design. Um... Yeah, this this doesn't seem like a very good heatsink design, as far as I'm concerned. They could have, I think they could have just shoved another heat pipe in there, maybe. Or, yeah, no, they should have probably just shoved another heat pipe in there. Like, they, I don't think they even needed to connect it to the fin stack over here. They could have just, like, run it. Because the problem is, like, that, that part of the chips is just floating in the air. And the, another heat pipe through the aluminum sort of base block that they have here... Uh, would have helped transfer some more heat into the sort of main fin stack. The main fin stack literally just relies on uh, the, like, aluminum to aluminum thermal transfer, which uh, I have my doubts about this being a good heatsink design. Like, the other Furies, especially, say, the Tri-X and the Nitro, the heatsink on those cards is amazing. One of the best GPU heatsinks I think ever ever built, and, like, it just does such a good job. Um, you know, cooling these cards to very, very low temperatures without even really needing a very high fan speed. This, on the other hand, like, yeah, this, this doesn't inspire confidence. Definitely worth testing. At least, though, at the very least, it has more, like, it is a more substantial heatsink than you get on the, uh, Strix card. The Strix card has a really thin, skinny heatsink, and that one also doesn't do a very good job. And then also, like, the other downside to this card design. So as much as I like what they've done in terms of the, uh, well, V-Core power delivery, the VCC, the, well, actually, VDDCI probably doesn't matter that they need to make it do, like, a U-turn. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, obviously, they've extended the PCB to the point that it actually reaches all the way to the end of the heatsink. And one of the big advantages with the uh, reference PCB for the Furies is that the PCB is, like, this long. So you basically get, like the very end of the card you get like a really well you get a thicker fin stack in that area but also the airflow just passes right through it without having to like bounce off of the pcb and that i think is one of the big reasons why those cards run so incredibly cool and quiet is just the air has a really clean uh fast way to get through the heat sink with little restriction right there's no forcing the the air through the they're trying to force the air past the pcb type deal going on um Whereas this, of course, yeah, this doesn't do that. <laughs> like, this very much doesn't do that. Um, right, like, this is where the VRM is, so that's where our MOSFETs are, and then you have, like, this. And so, basically, the entire heatsink is obstructed by PCB. Um, so, yeah, this is probably not going to run that, like, anywhere near as cool as, uh, as the Tri-X card. But... I don't necessarily care too much. Also, Gigabyte did a good job of keeping all of the components around the core low profile. So for liquid nitrogen, this PCB actually works just fine. So if I want to get an LN2 pod on there, yeah, that'll be no problem. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's it for this video. Um, interesting little card. I think I will do a full PCB breakdown of this, just like going over the actual efficiency of the VRM. 
Um, though I guess I've mostly already done that in this video, right? We've already talked about the low side MOSFETs, and that's like the important ones. The high side, they matter, but not anywhere near as much, right? Like the 90% 90, 90 of the current flowing through the VRM goes through the lo low side MOSFETs, so... Well, it, uh, they don't actually generate 90% of the heat, but they do pro gen generally pr produce way more heat than the high sides do. Um, and so, you know, low side MOSFETs are kind of like, if the low side MOSFETs aren't great, then it almost doesn't matter what the high sides are. Whereas if the low side MOSFETs are really good, then you also want good high side MOSFETs because, you know, you, you like, uh, th there's, like, at that point, the, the high sides are going to start being the, the bottleneck for how much power you can push. Anyway, um... So, yeah, we'll see. Um, may maybe I will do a PCB breakdown, maybe I won't. Um, I kind of want to post pictures of this PCB, though, somewhere. So maybe I'll put that up on my blog just so that there's uh, an image of this PCB on the internet that isn't, like, super tiny and hard to see and actually covers both the back and the front. Because it's another thing that bugs me is, like, sometimes you can find the front of a PCB and not the back, and then it's just like, oh, that's great, but, like... <laughs> There, there's more, like, you know, th that wouldn't show us the output filtering at, at all, and that's kind of an important part in, on GPUs, in my opinion. So, anyway, um, yeah, that's it for, for the video, so thank you for watching, thank you to the person who sent this in, um, like, yeah, this, this is definitely one of those cards that I'd, I've, I, I'd be very interested, like, I'm very interested in taking a look at, just because there's very little information on it, um, so yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, merch, well, the usual YouTuber merch, hoodies as well now. Um, and uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you check them out. And uh, yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.